I'm very excited. Look, I'm wearing the shirt. I know. I, we, yeah. Honestly, we figured you would be. We said we said we were wearing the shirt. I, yeah. That's Jerry Russo. Um, you guys get the fucking dish on everything. Uh, I mean, it's amazing. You guys got to give us the dish. No, <laughs> we love. Well, we're we're here to dish up. But yeah. what's his name? <laughs> with the Beverly dish Hills Housewives. Up. What's his name again? Up. Wow. Beverly Hills Housewives. Oh, Sandoval. Are Are you talking about Vanderpump? No. The, the, no, the the head person of every. Oh, Andy, oh, Andy Cohen. Cohen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy shit! You got to sit with Andy yeah, Cohen, yeah. God yeah. of reality television. Oh, yeah, it was unreal. I know. We felt that way sitting with him. Yeah. Also, <laughs> are you guys are you guys Coors Light or Bud Bud Light? What is Cor- your thing? Coors, again? Light. Coors, Coors Light. Coors Light. What? Yeah. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> You're prepared. Yeah. Oh my yeah, God. and I also have I have a backup shots in my pocket. Oh, just perfect! Anyone needs a shot. Good. I love Emergency it. Shot. I know. I need. Mean, I've, I've got to play catch up. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, he'll Learning. tell you. He'll I'm tell like, you. I can take a shot of yeah. coffee. Yeah, oh, like, I have my coffee. <laughs> I literally He's dreamt about me. this. He's like, look. Go ahead, David. Sorry. I, I, I even had a bit planned. I'm not going to do it, but I was going to be like, Noah, look, I could take off my shirt. And I was like, <laughs> you honestly should have. Listen, oh we might God, we might as well time. Let's, we might yeah, as well start. get started. Yeah. Like I feel like we could just roll right <clears throat> yeah, into yeah. it because we've been chatting already. We're here with two very special guests. We are joined by the lovely Jennifer Stone and David DeLuise from the Wizards of Waverly Pod. David is fully prepared in his substation shirt that we made. Uh, honestly, when you reached out asking about the shirts, we were like, "Are we about to get C and D? Like, we are like, we about oh, to get in trouble shit, for this?" We're, in trouble. <laughs> we're like, "Ah, oh, crap." They got us. Yeah, they found us, but you were just excited to have the shirt, and we are so excited to have you guys on today. And we are excited to be here. I'm a huge fan of your show. It, you guys are just so much fun. It's a, You know, it's funny. When you were talking to uh, Taylor Taylor Lautner, yes. um, you said something like- You always like, say his first name twice. Taylor No, he, what does he say? His he wife says, is named Taylor. Taylor. So they're both Taylor. Oh, that's true. Yes. No, I, okay, okay. But he even refers to her as female Taylor. Yes, but girl, what I was trying Taylor. to say is, yeah, girl you Taylor. even said to them, now they, like every single person in the world, has a podcast, like us too. Um, but you do feel like you're visiting with your friends. Like, mm-hmm. I've never met you guys, <laughs> but I feel like we're old friends. Exactly. You know? <laughs> well, let me also just say that we're big fans of you guys mm-hmm. and your show. Hence why, you know, we're making merch with things that are an ode to your show. We obviously, like, we're around that age where we completely grew up watching Wizards of Waverly Place, one of our favorites. Mm -hmm. So to see you guys do a podcast about it is so cool because everybody just wants that inside look on what it was like to do those shows and make those shows. And I'm sure you guys are asked about it nine million times. So how did the podcast come to fruition? How did you guys decide you were going to do it together? Enter Jen Stone. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it all started with Brennan Rooney and Christy Carlson Romano, actually, because um, they're like the heads of Podco, which is it's a podcast company that like they have a lot of other things, too. But they have rewatches and they have things that like are kind of people's like nostalgia safe space, the, the, that kind of space. And um, I had done some stuff with Christy um, with her like throwback kitchen on YouTube. And so Brennan reached out to me out of the blue and he was like, hey, do you want to do a, re- a Wizards rewatch podcast? And I was like, yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun now that I've had like, sorry, my cat is like beating. Yeah. She has to be involved in like every. So if you see the camera go like this, yeah. you know, like smacking her head on the side of the thing. Um, but I was like, yeah, but I don't want to do it alone. Like the idea of watching myself by myself and then talking about myself is like a middle school nightmare for right. me. Yep. So I was like, who's the person that I, that just makes me smile, that makes me laugh, that I would want to be talking to for like 106 episodes plus a movie and a special. And Deloise was the first person. That and and about. also the person that never stops talking. That's me. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I've learned more about like your IMDb and you directing, I think, from doing yeah, these but episodes. It's interesting because <laughs> yeah. I think the fans are interested. You know, I'll say to Jen. So I was working on CSI New York and Gary Sinise and she's like, OK, IMDb. But that's my life. You know what yeah, I mean? Sure. I, I do these things. So. Well, but also, I get I give you shit because, like, um, can we curse on, on yes, here? Yes, go ahead. Okay, great. All right, awesome. Shit, I balls, curse balls, balls. 
Um, it's like that episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm with the restaurant. I don't know if you guys remember that when he's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but like for me, like I, the, when I love you, I give you shit. If I'm super polite and nice and refined, then we got like, we're not cool. So right. like, I, you know, I give Del- Delaware mm. a bunch of shit because I love him to death. And I also think you're right, though. People are very interested. And I think this is such a great idea because we've been seeing people do the rewatch podcast. But, you know, for people who grew up being obsessed with Disney Channel, I think we want to hear from people who were on the Disney channel and the behind the scenes because Mm -hmm. you grow up and you're reading like the, the J 14 magazines and Tiger (laughs) B, which we did mention with Taylor Lautner as well. And you're like, there's drama behind the scenes and you want to know what's going on all the time. Um, I guess my question for both of you is for Jennifer, like, do you feel like there, that is true. There was drama behind the scenes and David for being like the father figure did you ever feel the need to like kind of you know get involved or did you just sit back and let the kids do their thing jen would you like me to go first or would you like to go first well i'm just gonna say that like because i i often joke and refer to it as disney high because i didn't go to high school right Mm -hmm. so i was homeschooled through all of that so um it was it was all of our high it was my high school years and it was so many of the other people on the other shows their high school years and when we were on it was like sweet life on deck hannah montana sunny with a chance which then became so random for reasons um but yeah so i refer to it as disney high because all the stuff that happens in high school happened with all of us where you know so and so dated so and so and then that other person got mad when like that then they later started dating the same person and it was all the same crap but just with a very heightened platform so it was kind of like everybody knew your business even more than like normal high school right so i refer to it as disney high all the time for that reason and it does happen in high school you're right this person dates that person then their friend dates that it's it's high school exactly but except it's really elevated and especially when we started like twitter and instagram were just coming out so it was even more elevated Mm -hmm. than it had ever been and you have access to things that no teenager should have access to. Right. Yeah. So yeah, so Disney High was out of control. But yeah, what was your experience with just trying to like wrangle all of us crazy kids? Well, in the in the beginning, I mean, my whole thing was I didn't really want to do a Disney show, a cable show. I mean, back then it was like you wanted to be on ABC, NBC, you know what I mean? You wanted to be on a, a network show. You know, Hannah Montana, I didn't want to come in and be like, hey, I'm the dad. Don't do that. At the end, like, I told you so. But there was a lot of ensemble stuff that happened here. I mean, with the thing that that came into my mind when you asked that question was, yeah, there was drama. You know, we we, our first season was shot, you know, with with no airing. We hadn't aired at all. So everybody was totally behaving themselves and everything was fine. And then into maybe the second season, there was a little more of jockeying for attention and positions and stuff like that. And, you know, some of the parents, some of the parents may be not so happy with who was placed in where and where is somebody standing or sitting or Mm. is my son getting the attention that he needs, you know? So from behind the scenes, I'm, I'm a fake parent, but I'm also watching all the jockeying of position for everybody. Yeah. I had an incident. I had a situation where, uh, Jake was fucking with Jennifer right before a take. And I was like, you know, we're rolling in. And he, he was, I don't think I've really talked to oh, about the podcast. This is new. This is a new episode. <laughs> yes. A podcast. I mean, I don't know how many episodes we've done, but you got to really like, go, have I said this? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Yep. Yep. So Jake says and starts to mess with Jennifer before we're starting. And, and I was like, and I became the dad, you know, I was like, no, you're not allowed to do that. And then Jake went to his dad and he complained. And then the producers got me and then I got in trouble. And I was like, what the fuck? I didn't do anything. Oh my he was God. being a shit. But then yeah. I went back and I said, you have to rewatch the footage. Yeah. Go back and see. And they were like, oh yeah, he was doing that. Some and classic I go, Good. teenage boy Don't- behavior. Yeah. And that's just the thing like- is it's like taking like the Disney high with all of like the dating and the yeah. parties and yeah. whatever. And then also remember we have to do a job as well. So like having teenagers being like, oh yeah, hey, this isn't playtime. Like we have to do a job. Yeah. So there's a lot of elements. Yeah. To, I, I, to that's why I that. really like that you guys are doing this podcast together too, because it's uh, a, two different perspectives 
on, yeah, on the same yeah. show, which is really cool because like with the age difference, it's like, oh, you remember that story way yeah. differently than I do. And seeing that come together is great. But I want to ask you guys too, from the beginning, how you, what you were doing before and how you got even cast onto the show. A massive amount of drugs. Yeah. No, wait a minute. I was, I was sober. I was sober at the time. Not anymore. No, I, I, I was, um, yeah, I was auditioning. I was doing stuff. I was doing pilots and this and shows. And there was a lot, there was a lot happening. I mean, I, I've gone back through, you know, you know, you, I've been looking through like old memorabilia and, you know, clippings and stuff of, of from the show when it came out and things. And I had done, a lot of pilots and stuff, you know, and, and r right before the, the show, I had been divorcing and I was finalizing my divorce, which was wonderful for me so I could move on. But the funny thing is, I could bring it right to divorce, but the exact <laughs> amount of money that I was making without the Wizards television show was the exact same amount of money that I was making when I did Wizards. So I didn't make any more money. But then my wife took me back to, to court to try to get more money. You know, so is, just, they just so wanted to know how you got to be a part of the show. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I auditioned and then I was on the show. So yeah. but, I mean, that was my, that's when you. I'm when like, I how did we get back to court, Eloise? Lordy. It still also, sticks was, with him. I, it was at the very yeah, beginning. Yeah. <laughs> She's coming for I the was wizard's like money. 30, 32 ish. You know, and I remember, I'll never forget, she's actually passed away right now, but my agent, I was like, do you think I should do this or not? She goes, well, you know, when it's over, you'll be about know, maybe 37, 38. You could still possibly get another television show. And I was like, am I ending my career? Oh my God. Is this over? Am I never going to act again? You know? So you were 32 when you got... I, you listen, math is uh, t tough for me. No, but so. that is that is so young, like to be playing yeah. a dad. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. Like you think about it, you're like, wait a second. I know. I just saw. I'm like, I'm like almost that old. That's crazy. Yeah. So but David had oldest, kids really young. Yeah, yeah. I was 21 when I had my first daughter. Okay. So and and Jennifer and Selena and my oldest daughter uh, uh, Riley are all the same age. I okay. think uh, uh, Riley is just about six months uh, younger mm -hmm. than you guys, but. I, I actually had a, a daughter her age, but David Henry was 17. So if you did the actual math for Disney, I would have been like 17 when I had David. <laughs> right. You know, so right. I, was playing, I was playing older, you know. But Jen, Jen Stone, yeah. what was it like for you before? Was Were it? you in divorce court? <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just now 30. So that's the next phase of my life, yes. life where I'm in divorce court. Um, but, uh, no, for me, I had, I had done a pilot, um, called bus life with like Vanessa Hudgens, Brandon Smith, Moises Arias, like a bunch of people that later Disney liked to find people they liked and then find a spot for them. Um, and so I had done this pilot and then they held on to me for like a year. I couldn't audition for anything else. I couldn't do anything else. Um, and then they ended Disney. up not picking it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but they they didn't end up picking it up because this was also like, I remember Vanessa on set being like, so I just did this movie, my boyfriend Zach, like we're it's like a high school and we're like singing. And I'm like, that sounds fun. Whatever. So, I like, can picture was, her like, saying it in yeah. that in that yeah, tone. Right? So like we were on set and she was talking about this movie she just did. And then as they were testing it, they're like, We're not gonna lock her down to a series. This right. is gonna be a huge thing. So that made sense. But anyway, so that they had just finished that year for that. And then Wizards came up and they wanted me to play the friend. And at the time, like I, to be really blunt, like I was out of money. Like I always funded myself coming out to LA from Texas. And I was, I, I was at the point where I was going to have to quit. And so I said, look, I can't do this as like a reoccurring character. Like you guys just don't pay enough money. I can't, I, I like fiscally cannot, you know, do that. Mm -hmm. And so they were like, well, then come audition for Alex, which I think was just a trick to get me to come out to, <laughs> to L.A. and audition for Harper because then they handed me Harper at the last minute and the rest is history. Mm. So. It's very. Can... Go ahead. Sorry, David. Go. <laughs> no, you, you. It's your show. No, no. Oh, I want yeah, yes. to hear what you have Mind to say. Well, I don't want I wanted to ask you guys a question. You were talking about the the Zoe 101, now Zoe 102, right? Mm, yes. And yeah. you're like, eh, I'm good. I'm good. I, I don't 
I, I don't need this in my life, right? The <laughs> idea of it or it's too late or what were you saying yeah. that, that it's like, when it's in the ether, put it out there. Don't do it like four years yeah. later or something. Right. You know? I, I think it's just, I called it a waste of time. It was, <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> um, really, that came. I, I think it comes from so much like our everybody's attention spans so sm- short these days. And when mm-hmm. everybody was calling for that, it was like, I people need to jump on it. Needs to be. It needs to happen fast and be put out fast. And that's how people stay interested. Because I think with like the whole reboot world. It can be confusing because are you making a reboot for kids or a reboot yeah. for the original audience? Like, I think that's why I mentioned like Hillary Duff was going to do the Lizzie McGuire remake and they had disputes on what they really wanted the show to be because she's like, you know, Lizzie McGuire's an, an adult now. Like, we don't want it to be the same show, which makes a lot of sense because it's like, you know, then you have like That's So Raven is back on air, but it's, you know, that's mm-hmm. and, and that's clearly made for kids yeah right yeah i i think with something like wizards jennifer i saw you guys put out a clip the other day where you talked about how selena was approached to do a spinoff of alex and harper and you don't know how true it is um and then i saw a bunch of comments being like oh we would love to see alex and harper in their 30s and i think that is a good idea for a tv show but it would it can't be Disney. Yeah. It, has you know what I mean? mat- it has, it has to, be to be matured. Actually, them in their thirties, yeah. which I think um, one thing about Wizards, though, even when you watch it back now, there was like a little bit of more mature humor at times. Like you know what I mean? It, it was still Disney, but I still look back and think that that was actually funny. Um, but I think if you were to do <laughs> yeah. a spinoff, it would have to be mature. Like you can't just go back to you know the slapstick humor. Yeah. One, as far as like it having a bit of an edge to it, like that was our showrunner, Peter Murrieta mm-hmm. in our writer's room. Like our writers were not, we, we talk about that a lot about how like, I think it's a trap that people fall into all the time of like, oh, it's just a kid show or it's just a Disney show. Or it's just a Nickelodeon show and, and not wanting to elevate that genre, you know, whether it's actors, writers, what have you. And on our, we lucked out. We had a really good team with wizards where we, they were like, we don't just want to make a kid show. We're not going to go for the easy joke. Yeah. We're not going to go for the obvious choice. Um, and I agree with you. I, I For what I would want to see for the reboot, I would want to see everybody now. But I think the tricky part about that, and I don't know where Disney is now with how like right. they balance things. And like, because I remember then like they would get upset about like the, the episode where we're, the band is throwing meat. Like they had a problem with that for some reason. Like they're, they're, they're like checks and balances of what they're okay with and what they're not is so weird sometimes that you're like, why is that a problem? Yeah. Um, that with it being a Disney property, I don't know now like how much we could do, which I think is with the Lizzie McGuire. Yeah, exactly. Like, reboot, that was part of the issue they had mm-hmm. was in your thirties. You start to have, and you know, you guys know, and, and David does too, because he was 32 when he did the show <laughs> um, of like, you know, you don't want to just talk about like, oh, I got detention again. Like it's right. bigger than that. Like your your world expands and you want to expand with the people who watch the show. Yeah. So I would hope for that with a reboot, but I don't know how much Disney would let us right. do as far as and that. And even the high school shows that do that are made now, whether it's the Netflix ones or HBO ones, like whatever it is, they're very mm-hmm. mature now. Very, mm-hmm. like, okay. very mature. I mean, somewhere in the middle. I don't somewhere need to see the- Wizards of Waverly Place in Euphoria. Euphoria version? Like, yeah, I don't no, think anyone <laughs> wants that. 100%. <laughs> but even like... I don't want to see that. I don't think anybody else wants totally. that. Totally. Yeah, but no. I'm, I'm just thinking of like, even what I've, you know, Outer Banks or mm-hmm. Netflix, like, um, what did I just watch with Jenna Ortega? Wednesday. 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 Like, those are like, oh, you yeah, know, yeah. it's still... It's still um, high school, but it is definitely elevated for sure. So, yes, it would have to be somewhere in between. (laughs) Yeah, a 12-year-old back in the day and a 12-year-old now is very different. Very different. Very different. Going on record, I don't know if I was 32 then or not. Uh, I'm, I'm not. (laughs) Nobody fact check this. But you were in your 30s. You were in your early 30s. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, that's all that and matters. We're not going to be so like, you if, weren't 32 exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so if we did do a reboot or something, I mean, it's going to be a little tricky because there's, it, you know, even just trying to get people on the podcast is that right. people are busy. Mm-hmm. Um, but the... Are they though? Are they? Yeah. Um, I don't know, Jen. 
I don't know. Are they busy or do they think they're busy? Yeah. Hmm. You know what? I'm gonna That's have a good to question. Just cool down. You know what? I'm that is cool a good My core is like, yeah, you just on, have my, to chill. My mountain is blue. Yeah. I'm ready. It's time to but chill. But do you guys, do you, do you guys ever from podcast from podcast people to podcast yeah. people? I'm sure you guys have that too. Where, oh, 100%. You know, people get a little big for their mm-hmm. britches. One, yeah. so they're like, well, I'm, you know, whatever. It's yeah, such an interesting totally. thing. We've for talked me. about it before. No yeah, we've had it. people like cancel on us and stuff, and we're like, just like in front really, of our face, like really, <laughs> you know. Yeah, oh, it's, it's so, like it's so it's hard to people. sit. Yeah. Go ahead, Jen. No, I was just gonna say it's always it blows my mind because it's always people that you're like. But why though? Like, completely. why do you like? You know what I mean? Like, that's the part that blows my mind. Which I'm like, where does this ego come right. from? And you're like, like is it personal? Ego. You're like, is it us? What did we do? That's no. That's... It's, I've I've learned through acting and through just life in general that the best thing is just to remember that literally nothing is personal. Personal. Mm-hmm. When that guy ghosts you, not personal. Yeah. When they don't cast you for whatever, not personal. When that patient I calls you a bitch, not personal. When the guys <laughs> when the guys ghost me, I can't stand it. Like, what, I know. What Must what be happened? tough for you, David. Um, it's just fucked up. Who do you really, who do you really want to come on the pod? Who do you really want from your show to come on the the pod? The cast members. All the cast members. (laughs) I mean, look. You've talked to Selena. Yeah. Yeah, Somebody took the time and was with us. (laughs) But here's the thing. is like, we, we all looked at it as like an ensemble show. Totally. Right. So it's like to me, yeah, breathe, David, breathe. Don't give yourself an ulcer. I feel like you guys are like, if Selena Gomez can make the time, why can't everybody else make the time? Yeah. You know what? Here's the thing. Yeah. Jen, if I may. Please. It's not about Selena Gomez making the time. It's about you, anyone making the time to be there for your friends, for your castmates, Mm -hmm. For the future of the possible reboot, for whatever, just be there for yourself. Even you know I think, I, mean? I think like, the biggest thing is like I have no problem. And David and I have talked about this. And you let me know if you guys feel the same way. But I have no problem when someone has like, hey, you know what? This personally just doesn't make sense yeah. for me. This is not the choice I want to make. Right off the bat, that I respect it. I have no problem. We've had guests where literally they're like, you know what? It just doesn't make sense for me. I don't want to be that like vulnerable or whatever. And that's, I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. Like I have no, that is your choice. I'm asking you and you say, no, I respect that. It's the wishy-washy of like, I'd love to, let's revisit this. Um, I'm Circle just, back. Totally. My people, <laughs> back. My yeah, people will call back. your people in two months. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, yeah. And and then when you call in two months, they're like, no, let's circle back again. And I'm like, well, I'm dizzy because we keep going in circles. Yeah, so yeah. it's it's the wishy washy bullshit that I think is more off putting mm-hmm. than just saying no. Right. If people were just straight up and said no, that would be totally different because uh, I respect that. Yeah. Than just this like mm, maybe and then doing stuff behind our backs yeah. and stuff like yeah. like screw that. I like, totally agree too with short. that. I think that just yeah. in life I feel like that's a general rule yeah. of thumb. Like not life is even... too short to not be upfront. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Forward. I have another I'm question. I'm gonna ask Oh shit wait, wait, I have a question. David, uh, just wait, have us wait. on your podcast. <laughs> We'll, we'll rewatch. Know, like, we'll we'll, we'll rewatch some episodes with you guys. Listen, guest. I will rewatch any, at any point. You go ahead, and then I'll ask my question. I'm kidding with you. Did you both act when you were younger, or was it just? I, uh, it was me. I've okay. auditioned for was, a ton of Disney shows. <laughs> Right, because that's and and El Fanning or whatever. There was a couple of things you were talking mm-hmm. about the other day where it was like you or her, yeah, you were yeah. her, and you know, I just maybe another time or when you come on our podcast. Yeah. I just am curious what that's what what that was like, what it morphed into, and when you were when you were like, okay, I'm not going to do kid acting anymore. You know what I mean? Well, I honestly is just rejection all the time. That's basically what I got. I did a lot of well, and I'm sure you can relate to this. When you're trying to be an actress, you do modeling too. Like you do the print work because you're trying to be an actress. And then the manager and agent's like, well, why don't you do print work on whatever? So I did a lot of print work, you know, like Cole, Sears, Target, all that stuff while I was auditioning for TV shows and movies all the time. And mm-hmm. I auditioned for, you know, Ant Farm. I did, I auditioned for Shake It Up, those shows yeah, on Disney. Yeah. And, it was always, you know how I knew someone was going to be on the show was like you said, they, they pick the people they like and they use them in different shows. So, yeah. um, China and McLean was on an episode of Hannah Montana. And I remember, yeah, she was on and our then, show too. yeah. And I was like, she's now going to be the star of Ant Farm. And it, like you could tell, yeah. and then Bella Thorne and Zendaya with shake it up. But when I was, um, in ninth grade is cause I did the child acting starting at 12 when I was in ninth grade, I auditioned for this movie um, 
and I had to do like a Russian accent. It was, I, I, I don't know, it was interesting. Um, and I went in and I did the Russian accent and I killed it. And I don't know why, but I crushed it. They just made me do yeah. this. And I walked out and I said to my parents, I was like, if I don't get this, like I'm quitting, like I'm done. I give up. I, oh, I can't wow. keep going. And then next day my manager called and was like, she got the part. And I was like, what? But then I couldn't <laughs> do it because I went to a, a strict Catholic school and they said if I, it started filming my last week of tests and they were like, if she misses yeah. these tests, then she has to go to summer school. And they were like, she can't go to summer school. She'll be filming. And they're like, well, then she has to go to public school. And to me, I went to private Catholic school my whole life. I was like, I'm going to have to go to public school. I was like, no. I can't do public school. And so I kind of just like put it to the side while I was in high school, I still did acting classes and like every once in a while I would go on an audition that my manager sent. But I started getting to that age where it was like, do you play younger, do you play older? And then it wasn't until I started interning at Barstool that like I picked up, you know, being in front of the camera again and, and all that. Yeah. But I think everything I helped just, me, lead me to this point. I just entered that age. I'm too young, I'm too old, <laughs> it's just, you know. What was the movie? What was the movie? I am totally blanking on the name and I usually remember it, but it was, um, it starred, I'm like, I'll have to find it after this. Um, it had okay. a girl who was, she's very well known and I am totally blanking on the name right now because I used to she's have- not like, She's not that well known. Well known. No, no, like, can, can I, I, can I, can I help? Well. <laughs> no, she has red hair. Um, I'm going to have to text my dad. He'll remember he'll because remember. he'll never forget this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. It's not it was, Eddie Redmayne, is it? No. No, it was a guy, okay. a guy, or a girl, girl, a girl well, with girl, red girl. hair. It was like a, it was like a, not a Disney movie exactly, but it was one of those like kitty like type of movies. You know, hmm. you know what I just realized? What a nice thing that you had that. You had it. Yeah. If you wanted it, it was yours. What you had the brass ring. You, you, it was in your court to make that decision. What a nice thing. You know, like when you go to a network and you're testing against two or three other kids that you all can do the job. You know what I mean? Like you, you, you were, yes, you didn't do that movie, but what a, what a nice testament to your talent. Yeah. And I, I, I think after that, I kind of was just like, uh, this isn't meant to be right now. But I was like, oh, I want to be. <laughs> then it flipped. I was like, I want to be a casting director so I can control these people's <laughs> destinies. <laughs> No, but I think I think David to your like your point though, like I I think it's always in your control. And I think that's something like as an actor you forget is that you have autonomy and that it's your life and it's your career. And because I, I feel like there's so much of like people pleasing and wanting to do what they're looking for and like all that kind of stuff. And which is for me, like I've gotten to a place for just because I've had to in my life. And then I always encourage other actors to be like, no, no, no this is your performance. This is your career. This is your thing. So stop giving it away to other people. So at any point when you're like, this isn't for me anymore, that's your decision to make because it's your life in the first place. So yeah. I applaud you for identifying that for yourself and not just like staying in it because it's easy and going yeah. into the unknown of yeah. like, okay, well, what has this prepared me for? Right. Like you mentioned, that's really cool. And when you're just starting high school, I was like so into like hanging out with my friends at that point. I had yeah. been auditioning for so long and felt so like rejected all the time. I was like, I just want to hang out with my friends. I want to be a normal kid. I, I know, no, not even yeah, that totally. because I was like, I just want to party. <laughs> I just want to enjoy high school. I just want to drink. <laughs> yeah, <light> and- <laughs> right, exactly. Um, but yeah, I have I mean, a question. That's, that's fair too. I know? have a question yeah. for you guys. Um, so everyone, you know, talks about how strict Disney is and the contracts and you're locked into that. When was it up with you guys? Like, was it immediately after Wizard stopped filming? Were you guys free to do what you want? Like, I'm interested in the logistics of what you guys were able to do. I'm going to go really quick, Jen. <clears throat> I auditioned for Grimm and to be the partner. Sean Hayes and his partner uh, were one of the producers. Uh, I was, you know, I had worked out all the stuff so I could do like the last episode of Wizards and then go and shoot the beginning of the show. And I'm on my way to drive there. And my agent, same agent I mentioned earlier, who's not with us, was like, turn around. We couldn't do the deal. There was a day, one day overlapped of an oh insurance day, not even a film yeah. day that they, I couldn't do it. So I, uh, you know, it, it, I, I did end up going to an audition mm -hmm. and I didn't, I didn't get it, but it was literally the last day of wizard stopped me from doing yeah. the show grim, wow. which was okay. I got to spend more time with my kids and stuff. And then, but, but as soon as wizards was done, I was not contractually obligated anymore. 
and then and then we did do the the special Alex mm-hmm. versus Alex, which I was not very happy with, and I tried to negotiate, and I got a little something, but Disney's still yeah. dead. Yeah. No. Well, and and that's how most of the deals work for people on on Disney. I think for people like Miley or Selena, they might have more of a um, a three sixty deal, is what they usually call it. Um, but uh, for us, usually it's just a deal where it's based on the show. So as soon as that show is done, you're done. You know what I mean? So they had me from fourteen to eighteen, and then I joke that I like got too old, so they kicked me out of out of the uh, <laughs> the club. You know? Um, but yeah, because literally, like the weeks talking about auditions. Um, thankfully, it was after, and I'm also really thankful that it didn't pan out because it probably would have been too much too soon for me. But literally, the week after. I think it was it was pretty soon at like the week or the month after Wizards. I had to, I was like the, uh, down to the last three or four to replace Lip's girlfriend on Shameless. Wow. Um, okay. Which I go back and I look and I'm like literally every scene she's like naked completely <laughs> yeah. and like in some kind of sex scene yeah. or something, which is probably why I did not. I mean, who knows why I didn't get the part, but one of the reasons was probably because I was like freshly 18. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the girl that got it was like in her early 20s yeah. and had done that. And her, like, I had done some of that stuff in my life. Before. Right. That, <laughs> like, that would have been, been a real flip for the, for the, for the fans who were like, oh, I'll watch what Jen's new project is. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it was, it was, it was quite, because I would just remember like signing because with Shameless, like you had to sign like literally in the casting room, you had to sign like, hey, you're okay with like nudity mm-hmm. and yeah. all this kind of stuff. You had to sign that like, right away and the and the casting room like when you signed in um to audition and i remember being down to the wire on that one like pretty soon after wizards ended being like well if it's meant to be it's meant to be but wow this is going to be a big like turnaround and then seeing what it turned out to be because like i said that character which was played by jane levy originally um was very different once she got recast um, cause it became very, like a lot more sexual. Like every scene was about sex scenes. I mm-hmm. think she even became like a prostitute at some point. Like it mm-hmm. was, it was very much a complete 180. So, so yeah, once you're done, you're done, you can do whatever. But during those four years or however long the show goes, like you're pretty limited into what you can do. So that's why most of the time what you see people doing is just other Disney mm-hmm. projects. Yeah. I was going to say, can you can't even audition for shows outside the network? Well, you can. We had a cast member who auditioned for um, a J.J. Abrams project and didn't say anything. It didn't say anything that he was on a Disney show, like just kind of like held his breath and hoped yeah. that um, they go- would know. And then got to the very. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> and then got to the very and I guess took it off his resume. Like, I don't know what he did, but he somehow got all the way to the end of that audition process. And then they couldn't give him to him because Disney wouldn't let him do it. Right. So, you know, and it was a pretty big, like I said, it was J.J. Abrams. Yeah. Super 8. Movie, so. <laughs> I was going to say. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, Audition for that one, too. You auditioned, <laughs> you auditioned oh, for that, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, and a girl yeah. I was very, very close with, I think I know who you're talking about with the guy, because a girl I was close with from, she made it to the end, and I remember it was like three boys and a girl, and she posted all the pictures, like, I'm in California, we're all testing. Which is the worst. Yeah. You're like, I don't want to see that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my yeah. gosh. Well, Jen, I'm also curious just for you, like, when the, when the show ended and now you know things quiet down a little bit and you actually transitioned into becoming a nurse which is so yeah. cool and I just want to know more about that transition because I feel like you know for those who followed you on social and saw all your stuff it was kind of like I'm a nurse like you know we were like whoa yeah. how, how did mm-hmm. they, what, what what happened in between <laughs> Well, it's it's so funny because I there was a lot of people that just don't know how nursing school works, which is fair. If you're not a nurse, why would you? Yeah. Um, but they're like, she became a nurse because of the pandemic, and I'm like, this has been cooking no, for I a don't. lot of years. Nursing <laughs> school is a long time. You just snap yeah, your fingers and become time. a nurse. Yeah. I also don't exactly. think a lot of people would sign up to be like, oh, well, now is when I want yeah. to be a nurse. I mean, I still can't get over the timing. I mean, the yeah. timing is absurd. I I I did this Christmas movie. I remember getting the email. Because I had had some health issues after Wizards. Like, I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes when I was 20. Um, so I had a good two years before, like, my whole system, like, shut down. And, and so I had to re- I took a break from acting yeah. um, because I had to – I was in and out of hospitals and doctor's offices just trying to figure out what was going on with me. And because of that experience, I got the good, the bad, and the ugly right. of healthcare. And so I, I was already going to school t- uh, to get my psychology degree um, because in my family, like – 
you get a degree. Like <laughs> I was still acting and they were like, that's fine, but you have to have a degree in something. Um, and so I completely switched gears and, and changed to nursing because I wanted to understand my body better. And I wanted to make sure that no other patients had some of the negative experiences that I had of feeling unseen or blamed for something that's completely out of their control. Um, so I graduated December 2019 from nursing school being like, OK, I've taken a break uh, from acting. I can get back. I can't wait. 2020 is going to be my year. I'm going to get back to acting. And then, of course, you know, the whole world fell apart. So I was baptized by fire. But I yeah. I'm a big believer that, you know, timing happens for a reason and your place where you are for a purpose. Absolutely. And it's interesting because and I'm so proud of you, Jen, that, that Thanks, you're David. doing that and that you're helping people. And I always say to Jen, I'm like, I do fun acting stuff. You save people's lives. Mm-hmm. You know, right. it's very different. Not not to say that you have to do one or the other because Jen does yeah. both. She's so it's incredible to do both. It, it really is. Yeah, it's incredible to be able to do both. I must be a complete masochist. Yeah. I don't know. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, I mean, that, that is a lot on your plate. And now what's it like for you guys? You're doing the podcast and you still want to act. What's like a project that you want to do and get your hands on? Or is there anything that you would want to make? Well, I don't know. I, if I may, Jen. Please. Um, I've been rambling. Go. I don't know how much I still want to act. It's no much. It's not fun for me right now. <laughs> I mean, I'm too old and I'm too young, just like you were. At yeah. point. It's like, remember, I mean, be, being very uh, frank, memorizing a massive amount of lines for me now is a little tricky. My, my wife really has to help me and get into <laughs> my brain somehow. But I really, for me in my life now, I just really want to live in the country and I want to enjoy my wife and my dog and, and go on walks and watch out for the bears, you know. Yeah. I yeah. love doing this podcast <laughs> with Jen. I love this. And I love, you know, I love talking to people and I love, yeah. and you, I don't you, know how much, I love re-watching myself. It's a little weird, but I do <laughs> love going back, you know, kind of reliving these these memories. So, which which is fun, but... I think I'd rather like produce something or, or do that kind of thing. But then I'm rambling. But my friend says to me, do you want to produce a movie? I'm like, oh, that yeah. sounds like a lot of work. I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. I just want to have fun. You just want to relax and do, enjoy do you life. teach a little bit? Yes. Uh, yeah. Jen and I both teach. We, we, I have an acting studio called AGB, Actors Giving Back. And we work with kids. We do a six-week seminar. We've had literally hundreds and hundreds of kids get agents and managers yeah, that's and awesome. wh- whether they're working in the business or not we talk to them about getting to know themselves and anyone who's you know i don't know a, a, a younger than 18 any kind of help about getting out of your skin or communicating about your feelings and emotions i think is is great so yeah, yeah we do we we teach the kids it's funny i did that this weekend uh, Always uh, that's awesome. on instagram yeah, and it's really it's really fun. You you look at my Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Yes, we saw. <laughs> we saw. Yes. <laughs> uh, what about you, Jen? Um, For me, like I, again, like I said, I don't think things. I'm a big believer that things happen for a reason, and so I'm just looking at my love of storytelling and collaborating. And I loved Wizards because it felt like an ensemble. And I, I just look at all the medical shows and things like that out there, and some of them I love and some of them I watch and I'm like, that's not right. You're doing that wrong. Yeah, yeah. Like that's, <laughs> you know what I mean? You just committed murder. That's not how you do that. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Um, but uh, yeah, don't shock every heart rhythm ever mm-hmm. um, or give insulin when they have low blood sugar because that's a felony. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but so for me, like I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, writing a show about nurses or healthcare providers that also like showcases diabetes in a way where it's not like an after school special. Right. So I, I'm looking at it creating and telling stories that has a good ensemble cast. Cause that's what I love. I love shows like that. I was just watching the new season of the bear. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of what's his name from, from yeah, Shameless. Yeah, yeah, Jeremy yeah. Um, but I love, I love like good ensemble shows. Yeah. Like those are my, like, you know, those are my favorite shows where it's not about one person, but it's a bunch of people kind of influencing each other um, to tell a greater story. And so I would love to be a part of um, a medical show that's accurate and also features representation as far as, you know, different races, different identities, as well as different like chronic conditions like type yeah, one diabetes. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, that would be awesome. Fingers crossed. You know, I hope yeah. that that is something that you, Thank you can can make because that's certainly something that we would be interested in. The world would be interested in because I think, especially after our last few years, everybody is 
at least acted like they want to learn more about yeah, right. that that world and have accurate depictions and everybody loves those medical shows that yeah. you know they well, but also too and, and, all the doctors get all the love the yes, nurses get no love every time true. i watch because I, I used to have di- uh, like Grey's anatomy on in the background yeah whenever i was like studying in nursing school i swear every nurse was just like they're coding and then they like uh, yep. drop a tray yep. Yep. Like, yep. That totally. was, i was like what i was gonna say so Grey's like, anatomy great show but not entirely accurate <laughs> no, no, and I the or doctors right, have a patient in my life, right? Ever, and I, I have a lot of friends that are nurses as well. And the stories that I hear from them are crazy. I'm like, the that could yeah. really be yeah. the fuel for uh, for a story. Um, but we we got to wrap it up with you guys, sadly. But I do want to say you've watched so many episodes so far. You're rewatching your show. Has there been any specific character storyline, your character storylines that you've really loved rewatching? I'm going to let you go, Jen, but I just want to clarify yeah. one thing. I do want to still act as a <laughs> Oh, my <laughs> gosh. He wasn't 32. He still wants to act. Like, he, he, he heard that pitch from Jen and was like, that sounds like a really good show. Do they need any, like, ma- do they need, do they need any male show? nurses? He's like, I'm actually I'm thinking available. about going into nursing school. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to do a recurring on a sitcom. That's it. Yes. Okay, Jen. No, and, but it's true, and and the world needs you on a sitcom. You're too dang funny, yeah. especially with your. You are very comedy. funny. David always comes with a bit for yeah. sure. Um, there's not one episode where he's like, as as we were talking before we started, he's like, so I thought of a bit, but I'm not going to. Yeah. That's just always <laughs> always Delores. You I would be it. great on a sitcom. Um, but um, but for me, like a storyline that I loved rewatching. There's a lot that I'm really excited to get to, especially in like the second and third season. Um. But from what we've watched so far, I've really enjoyed seeing just like the early stages of Alex and Harper because it makes me think back to like how much we grow in those four years of high school where like we re- just rewatched the Tea Party episode not too long ago. And Al- and Harper, like she so wants to prove herself to other people and she so wants to be like in with the crowd. Yeah. And I think later on we get to see her be OK to stand alone and be OK to be different because i think harper is so inherently her own person but it was interesting to kind of look back and see that early on she wanted to fit in a bit more yeah and so to watch that kind of like maturation of getting to a place where Mm -hmm. she's like you know what i'm not like everybody else and that's kind of cool so it's been interesting to kind of see just sort of like the freshman versions of alex and harper what about you david I, every episode that Jen Stone is in, you know what's fucking weird is watching an episode you're not in. You're like, what the what? What were they doing? Yeah, what it's like you weren't there. Me? Yeah, you know. Um, I, what's really interesting, and there isn't a specific episode that you know. I always would like the continuity episode. Selena and I got to dance. It was so fun. You know, it was, it was a father daughter <laughs> yeah. moment. In sitcom, you don't get a lot of real moments, and in that particular episode, which we haven't rewatched yet, uh, uh, there's a there's a nice thing there. You know. Um, but watching yourself, I don't know if, if you have experienced this or how, I mean, you, you go back and listen to some of the shows that you did in the beginning. You're like, what the fuck am I about to say? What did I just do? <laughs> yeah. It was like 10 years ago. Yeah. So also just the idea of watching it objectively. So I have my wife who's never watched the show. So she's watching it for the first time, watching me watch myself laughing at myself, yeah. you know, or, it, or cringing, yeah. you know, but it's, it's, I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. No, it's just watching yourself and not knowing what you're going to do, which is really interesting. I think Sir Lawrence Olivier, they said, do you ever watch your work? And he said, I, w- I usually wait some time in between about about 10 years. And I'm like, well, I've done that now. Yeah, yeah I love so that I you equate know. wizards to Sir Lawrence Olivier. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, just, you know what I mean? Like, no, I know him. what you mean. I, I know. <laughs> it almost it feels like another yeah. lifetime, though, when you watch yeah, it's like yourself or listen to yourself yeah. from years ago. You're like, who was who that? Was that? I don't person? even feel like that was real life. It's kind of freaky. Yeah. We do that to yeah. when we're listening, when we listen or see old videos of ourselves, and we we're ourselves. Like you're watching a character. Yeah, yeah you're watching a character. <laughs> we're we're like that. Yeah. That's me. I was like, that's how I acted as a person. Like really, like me as a human exactly. being. And also, my voice completely changed. Yeah, it's that is very true. bizarre. Yeah. 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 Listen, I know no, we're doing the wrap true. up, but if if you guys do a live performance, by the way, all of your fans 
are just the best. They, they really love are. You guys they so are much. The, the and I want to come to a live performance. Yes, at one please time. do. We Let's would do love. it. Please come, guys. We our yeah, live shows have to are the best. Show. Yeah, you're you gonna have to leave the countryside. <laughs> you would love our live shows. They party <laughs> like not yes. only is it fun and funny like they have a good time <laughs> yeah they're they're a ton of fun so yes let's let's get on that and you tell hey you guys tell us whatever episodes you want we'll come watch them with you we, we will rewind. Rewind. i know oh we God. weren't on the show Wait. but yes. i'm out everybody we <laughs> are going to measure it out we'll know exactly which one we're going to do a rewatch on and we'll do a rewatch with Perfect. you okay you'll get yeah. the fan perspective right. that's a whole nother perspective yes. <laughs> I love yes that. um love all right that. thank you guys so yes, much thank everyone you guys. make sure you're listening to the podcast and re-watching wizards with them it's, it's yeah and awesome. it's out on mondays if mondays want to know that yep, yep. absolutely Mon- once a month every monday yes Yes, yes, every, every Monday, Monday yeah. YouTube, Apple, or Spotify. Perfect. After you listen to Chicks in the Office, then you go over yeah. to Wizards of Waverly Park. Perfect. Thank you guys so yes. much. Thank you guys. It was so nice meeting Thank both you of you. Guys. Thank you. Thank you.